A while ago, I made an omelet inspired by the French Revolution. It wasn't good. That is unpleasant. This will be a sequel to that video, but won't be anywhere near as gross. Today, I'm going to explain the rise and fall of Napoleon, poorly, by making a carrot cake. The best part of my recipe by far is the caramel filling. It's the Napoleonic code of the recipe. But instead of equality before the law, merit-based promotions, religious toleration, and the metric system, the filling uses a cup and a half of sugar, a quarter cup of flour, three quarters of a teaspoon salt, and a cup and a half of heavy cream. Just as Napoleon peppered in his family members to leading positions in puppet states across Europe, we're going to drop in a stick and a half of butter and heat over medium-low. Stir until those pieces melt. Unlike Joseph Bonaparte, they'll pretty easily assimilate with their surroundings. Bring to a simmer and cook for about 20 minutes until it's nice and golden brown. Let that cool for a while, throw in a cup of chopped pecans, a teaspoon of vanilla, and then throw it to the elbow of the fridge. Just overnight though, it'll come back. Now, the cake part. What exactly allowed Napoleon to rise to power and spread his influence over the European continent so quickly? It was a combination of things. First, let's take a look at the state of France before he rose to prominence. Absolute chaos. France was being led by a body called the Directory. To symbolize them, we're going to combine a cup and a quarter of vegetable oil with two cups of sugar. This mixture is loose and weak, just like the Directory. Napoleon will be our dry ingredients. We'll start with two cups of flour, Put in two teaspoons of cinnamon to represent his knack for military strategy. Two teaspoons of baking powder for his boldness, both in staging a coup d'etat and getting himself named Emperor of France. One teaspoon of baking soda, which I forgot to make a bit for. And one teaspoon of salt for his saltiness towards England. Add half this mixture to the oil and sugar, then alternate adding eggs, which we'll say are support from the public, and the rest of the dry ingredients, until four eggs and all of the dry ingredients have been added. Under Napoleon, France ballooned in size, so we're going to make the batter do the same by adding a pound of grated carrots and a cup of chopped pecans. Put that into an oiled and floured tube pan and then bake at 350 degrees for an hour and 10 minutes. While the cake cools, we're going to make the frosting, combining eight ounces of soft butter, eight ounces of cream cheese, a pound of powdered sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla will give you a frosting you can spread across a cake just like Napoleon spread over Europe. As we put this cake together, we can see how Napoleon's empire fell apart. The problems he faced piled up. The guerrilla war in Spain, his failed invasion of Russia, along with massive troop loss, piled onto each other just like the layers of cake and filling are being piled. On top of that, he spread his navy too thin with the continental system, deciding to block Europe from trading with Britain by surrounding the entire continent. The cake is complete, but just like Napoleon after his escape from Elba, it won't be around much longer. It'll soon be banished to the St. Helena of your stomach. Carrot cake can be a polarizing dish, and Napoleon can be a polarizing figure. They both have their flaws. Napoleon tried to reinstate slavery in Haiti. People put raisins in carrot cake sometimes. But the people of France remember Napoleon as a great figure and continue to cherish him, just as I will do with this magnificent recipe.